And to the ear, if you've been joining the Love Qigong Comedy Flow, because the ear flex for the kidneys, and so is the bottom of the foot. So it's fascinating that the ear is actually a template or a reflex of the entire body. So every drop of blood goes through your ear every hour. So the blood is closest to the surface of the skin in your ear. So if you want to touch your blood, you can literally touch your blood through your ear. And the fascinating thing is that we've got a chart that explains how all that happens. So the lobe of the ear represents the face. And the first cave represents the chest cavity where the heart and lungs is. And then the next cave represents the abdominal cavity. And then the triangular fossa represents the pelvic cavity. So we've got three different parts. We've got the cave, we've got the lobe, we've got the chest cavity. I know there's a little bit of glare, so you may not be able to see the lights are reflecting off. Then we have the abdominal cavity, and then we have the pelvic cavity. There we go, that's better. Then we have the spine of the ear, and then we have the back spine of the ear. Then we have the allergy point at the top, and then we have the fingers, the hands, the arms, the neck, and the shoulder. So every part of the body is represented on the ear. Now, your question is, what does that mean to me, and how can I use that for healing? Well, I'm sure you've heard of foot reflexology. Now, the problem with foot reflexology is your feet smell, and you got to take off your shoes and socks, and you got to soak your feet in hot water before the foot reflexologist can get down to doing what it does. And it's very, very effective. But with ear reflexology, you can do it to yourself. And if you're rubbing your ears, nobody's going to look at you weird. But if you're in public at a restaurant and you pop off your sandals or your shoes and socks and start rubbing the bottom of your feet, not kosher. Definitely not cool. So that's the fascinating thing about ear reflexology. Now, a little bit of background. I started this back in 1980 with Dr. Dondish, who is a Russian MD who taught me ear acupuncture as part of a research protocol he was doing at NYU Medical School for recovery of surgery with ear acupuncture. Whoa! That was a really long time ago. And I was privileged to have access to all his books, all his charts, and all his knowledge from Russian as well as Chinese perspective. So in 1999, I'm sorry, 1989, I wrote my first book on ear reflexology. And then 10 years later, I upgraded it. I was the first one to use auricular therapy for weight loss in the United States. And Dr. Li Chun Huang was my teacher, and I spent over a year studying with her. She's trained over 25,000 people in auricular therapy, so she's world famous. And we had a lot of fun together, and I'm here to share some of that knowledge with you. So using the ear as a reflex for treating different things, the first thing we're gonna use is our hands. So we're gonna massage the lobe of the ear. So you're gonna warm your hands, you're gonna generate some heat, and then you're gonna palm your ear, and you're gonna hold that for about 10 seconds. Then you're gonna create some friction, and then you're gonna bend your ear forward, 
and you're going to press for about 10 seconds. Then we're going to pull the lobe of the ear 30 times. Now, anybody who's been to act to uh, Catholic school knows that the nuns, they pull your ear. And the fun thing is the connection between the ear and the face is the relax point. So if you are tense, all you have to do is put your ears away from your body and hold it for about 10 seconds and automatically you're going to calm down. Now, why does that even work? Because the root of the ear is connected to the base of the skull, which is connected to the cerebellum, which is the base of the brain. And that is connected to the brain stem. And at the top of the brain stem is the pineal gland. Wow. So just pulling on your ears actually connects to your pineal. That in itself is just amazing. Now, you're going to use your index finger. You're going to go into that first cave, and you're going to do 30 circles forward. Now, obviously, ladies, if you've got fingernails, you can't go there. You kind of have to move it that way. And you're going to do 30 circles forward, and there's a little lip, and there's another little hollow. That's the abdominal cavity. And you're going to go 30 circles forward there. Then there's another little lip, another hollow called triangular fossa, and you're going to go 30 circles forward there. Then you're going to grab the top, and you're going to massage down the edge of the ear 10 times. And then after we do that 10 times, that's massaging the fingers, the hands, the arm, the upper arm, the shoulder, and the neck. All that is when we massage down the edge of the ear. Then using your thumb, you're going to go up the back of the ear, and you're going to do that 10 times. And that literally massages the spine. That literally massages the spine on the back. And then we're going to go up the front of the spine. So there's a little flap next to your ear, ear called the tragus that covers the ear hole. And opposite that is a little nipple, which is the brain point. So if you find the lobe and at the top of the lobe, that little nipple, you pinch that, that stimulates your brain function. So now in between the brain point and the tragus is called the intertragus. So if you massage up the inside of the ear, you're getting the inside of spine. And then at the top is the low back, legs, knees, and feet. So if you just go straight up, I don't know if you can see me, you go straight up, literally massaging the spine. And then we end with pinching the tragus, which is the adrenal hunger and thirst point. And we pinch that 10 times. Now, all that is in a sequence, which is part of ear reflexology, which is in an ebook that I wrote, and you can get that ebook for free if you purchase the ear acumagnus, which I'm going to show you momentarily. Now, you have a question, and your question is, how do I find out where to put these ear magnets? Before you even tell me about the ear magnets, I want to know. So this is called an ear probe. And this is called a tation probe. And in this tation probe, we have, I'm just looking for an open one. And of course, I can never find the open one. So we're just going to use this one. And we're going to just scroll around with the probe until we find the tender point. So using this as an anatomy uh, chart, as an identification chart, we can just use this probe to scroll around until we find one that's a tender point. Now, the magnets are so interesting because you have magnets, have a rod, and we have a disc. So... With our rod that looks like this, 
And with our disc, there we go. The magnets are very, very powerful. So if I had an assistant, they would have handed it to me already ready to go. So we have a rod and we have a disc and you can see how powerful that is. Okay. That's about 3000 gauss. Okay. So now what we want to do is we would put the disc in the back and the rod in the front. And because the magnet is so powerful, it just stays there. And so we can use our finger to push it up and see how, see how it moves. So I'm, I'm hoping you can see that, all right? And then we can use that and we can go down. So just moving the one in the back, we can change the one in the front. Now, with our chart, once we've located the point that we want to use because it's a tender point, then we can mark that on a blank chart, which will also be provided to you. And then you can figure out where you're going to place your magnet. So by using the point on the back, the disc on the back, you can change the rod. And you can put two points in each ear. So you can have four points in each ear. So our first diagnostic method is just to find the tender points. And then if you say, I have a low back problem or a shoulder problem or a neck problem, any musculoskeletal problem, you can just put it on those points. Now, what if you wanna quit smoking or lose weight, or have insomnia, or have low energy. In the ebook, there's 32 different conditions that I've tried and perfected, and I know that these points work because I've been doing this for 42 years. And then you can place those magnets on those different points. Now, traditionally, the way uh, Dr. Chung taught was to take a magnet to one side of the ear. But when you live in Florida where it's hot and people have hair grease and coconut oil, that tape slips and slides. So my innovation was to put a magnet in the back and the front. So that was my unique contribution to the science of auricular medicine. And so by using a rod and a disc, I make it easy to manipulate the magnets to the exact point that you need them to be. Now, there will also be provided a blank chart. So once you scroll around and you look at your chart and you use a mirror, you can decide where you're gonna put those magnet points. And then you can put them on, like I said, two points in each ear. So you're going, to, so your ear magnet kit is going to include four pairs of ear magnets of different sizes. So there's going to be medium and large so that you can move them around. Some people have thick ears, some people have thin ears, some people have big ears, some people have little ears. So I had to create an assortment of ear magnets that would accommodate anybody's ears. Now here's the most fascinating thing of all. You only have to wear them for one hour a day. And the magnets will last 60 years before they lose their magnetic traction. 60 years. If you're 20 years old and you don't lose them, of course, those magnets will last you till you're 80. So here is the issue for us, is we want you to be able to self-treat and self-heal. And that is how we use ear magnets. Now, we also have microcurrent electric stim. And this is what I call 
the Zen pen. And this is electric stim. And we have a point to use on the ear. So we can actually put this in your ear at certain points, depending upon the particular condition that you have. And then we can also use moxibustion to warm the ear. So we can literally put heat in the ear. So we've got a number of methods. So we can use our fingers, we can use magnets, we can use electric stim, or we can use heat to move energy through the ear, which is connected to the root, which is connected to the brain stem. So there is your ear reflexology. So if you have any questions about auricular acupuncture, auricular medicine, auricular therapy, now's the time to ask your question. So this is the next to the last podcast that we're doing every day. Tomorrow's going to be our last podcast this week. And then we're going to shift to a once a week podcast every Friday from 11 to 12. So you have to subscribe to the future podcasts by going to 21 days to wellness.com. That's the numerals 21 days is plural to wellness.com. And that'll get you on the subscription list. The podcast is free and it's heard on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Radio Play, uh, every podcast platform you could think of. There we are. So anything, uh, questions you want to ask? And like I said, there's over 25,000 people in the United States that are using ear reflexology right now. So it may be way more common than you think. But, a question. Okay. You mentioned the throat. Why oh, you didn't probably mention the throat point? Where's the throat point? The throat point is actually in the hole of the ear. That is the throat point. So are you asking for a specific problem? or a person? Do you have a sore throat? Why are you asking about the ear point or the throat? Because there's much better ways of treating the throat. Primarily, we use the ear for musculoskeletal problems and energetic problems, such as lose weight, stop smoking, erectile dysfunction, low energy, insomnia, jet lag, those are the kinds of things that we use the ear for. So can you tell us some, some success stories with the ear magnets of people who gave up a habit by using them? Well, like I said, I've been doing this since 1983. So I've got a ton of success stories for you. So after I worked with uh, Dr. Yeshi Dandan, I went to work at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx where we used ear acupuncture for heroin addiction. So we had a ton of drug addicts. We had 160 to 180 drug addicts every day coming to Lincoln Hospital. And so we're doing ear acupuncture for drug addicts. And they would always tell us what points worked and how they felt internally and how to, um, what points they preferred, which points they thought had the most interaction. 
I pioneered the weight loss program with ear acupuncture because all the nurses at Lincoln Hospital were kind of overweight because they sit 12 hours a day. So they kept asking me. So I went to Dr. Mike Smith, who was the supervisor of the program, and I asked him and he said, I don't have time to figure out weight loss. Go ahead, you, you figure it out. We're treating drug addicts here. So on my own time, I figured out a combination and I started treating the nurses at Lincoln Hospital. And lo and behold, they lost weight. So that set in motion a series of things. And I was explaining it to someone and they went out and invented a plastic ear clip on the main point that I use for weight loss. And they went on TV and made a million dollars. And that was my fault for sharing intellectual property. So now I learned my lesson. And if you want to learn, you can get certified in ear reflexology in a weekend course. Actually, it's two weekends, but you got to start with weekend number one. And then I can teach you all the methods of using strategies to stimulate ear. So we can even use toothpicks. So I'll tell you a short story. I dropped my son off at summer camp and I just decided to hang out with the other parents. It was the first day at camp and the kids are running around and one kid fell and skinned his knee and the blood uh, was gushing out. And so they brought the kid to me. I stopped the bleeding and I didn't have any of my acupuncture equipment. So I picked up a pine needle off the ground. I found the knee point on his ear and I just jabbed the pine, uh, the, um, pine needle from the tree into his ear about 60 times. And he's like, my knee doesn't hurt anymore. That's a dramatic story. Another time uh, I was in church with my cousin and her daughter was 13 years old and she kept squirming in her seat. And her mother was like, stop squirming. And then I said, what's wrong? And she said, I can't tell you what's wrong. I said, oh, you must be on your period. And she's like, Uncle George, how did you know? So I took, stuck my thumbnail into the uterine point of her ear. And in less than 60 seconds, she's like, my cramps are gone. So those are just a couple of the miraculous one treatment with ear acupuncture. Uh, another time I was given a lecture and somebody came in and fell out. And it turns out they had just been in a car accident and they had um, a stress trauma from the, uh, from the car accident. So I went to the back of the room. I had my needles with me. I put a needle in each ear and less than 10 minutes, she perked up. She's like, I can't believe it. All my pain is gone. So those are just a few of the uh, success stories. And for years, Lose weight, stop smoking, highly successful. Four weeks or less with the stop smoking. Typically, two weeks stop smoking with the ear acupuncture. So, um, I hope that's very encouraging. That's pretty awesome. What do you recommend for spirit Shen Trauma? Well, there is a point called Shen Men. And there's another point called the zero point. So I would use Shen Men and zero point in each ear for uh, Shen trauma. Somebody um, asked you how much is the course? Or they have to go to the website? Or? They've got to go to the website. I can't get prices the out over the... The link is um, in the description, if you mention that. So if you want the ear reflexology certification course, it's two weekends. Is yeah. it in person or online? It's both. You can do in person or you can do online. I have people in California that did it all online and they're very happy with it. 
And can a massage therapist do it? Absolutely, a massage therapist can do it. They're the, the most logical person. In so fact, who, in fact who's, the, who's the best people to do this? Besides, besides massage therapists, any holistic practitioner, anybody who already does reflexology, um, herbalists, nutritionists, fitness trainers, yoga teachers, anybody who's really into holistic medicine, they would be perfect for it. Somebody says, hey, for some reason I have this feeling that I'll stop breathing. I don't know if it's because of my neck strain or it's the bone crushing stress and diaphragm. Why does the back of my head feel anxiety and panic? Well, that's where the body drumming comes into place. So you're going to hit your, you're going to cup your hand and you're going to hit the back of your neck eight times and you're going to do it eight times again. And you're going to do that three times and then you switch hands and you're going to do the same thing again on the opposite side. So that is going to bring instant relief. And then again, if you do the uh, drum your lungs, may making your fingers stiff and drumming your lungs, it will definitely make an immediate difference. And if you want to learn all about body drumming, you can go to lovechigong.com, register for the class, and um, get the archive of all the past shows where we talk about body drumming. So once you take the class, you get certified in Thai yoga. Then the next level is Qi Fitness, and the next level is Qigong Instructor, and the next level is Qi MD. You become a doctor of energy medicine. That's if you really want to get certified. If you want to learn how to help people, if you want to become a holistic practitioner, then after Thai yoga, the next training is reverse aging specialist, where you teach people about breathing, meditation, and you're going to learn 18 Qigong exercises that you can prescribe for just about any condition whatsoever so in the reverse aging specialist you're going to learn the body drumming you're going to learn all of that good question i, I find i hold my breath and i have to take myself i have to make myself breathe when i realize it do you know why i hold my breath a lot of people do that breath holding is a very common problem uh, I would say at least one out of five of my patients have that problem. And it takes a number of visits to get them to learn how to breathe properly. So it's a practice? You just got to practice. All right, that concludes all the questions. So, um, Any final thoughts? Well, I've been doing this since 1983. I've never promoted irreflexology until today. I, I teach it to people who request it, for people who come after me and demand that I teach them. But in terms of really promoting how to use irreflexology, that's not been a priority until right now because there's a lot of stuff going on and you already know I don't have to go into any detail. But... If you know how to make yourself healthy, the healthier you are, the better off you are in terms of preventing heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, and any type of infections. So the stronger your immune system, the more in charge you are of your own health, then the more likely you are to beat any virus, parasite, fungal, or bacterial infection, the more likely you are to beat high blood pressure or heart disease, the more likely you are to beat cancer and diabetes. So your health is in your hands and you can learn how to massage your own ears. And prevention is the only cure. 
And so if you want to be well, you've got to learn ear reflexology. <laughs> I'm Dr. George Love for the Blue Dragon Academy. And ask Dr. Love your questions about acupuncture, herbal medicine, Asian medicine, and your health. Anytime you think of a question, you can just go to your cell phone and text me at 81010 and just put in at Ask Dr. Love and you'll get a reply window and then you can just ask your question. So that's how we elevate each other. I'm here for you. Thank you.